The Greek word for conform is suhematizo, which means to identify with or to outwardly shape. If I was a very, very skinny man, and I wanted to become muscular, built, buff, therefore I will focus my attention on trying to gain muscle, become stronger. I will be attached and attracted to whatever I set my eyes on to get my body that way. So from being skinny to being massive, it would take time, but I would eventually get there. Notice that it's the change that's on the outside, not necessarily the change on the inside. So therefore, I'm gonna be conforming to whatever my mind is set on. I'll be focusing on that. About six, seven years ago, I was close to being a diabetic. I didn't find that even possible because I was six foot four, 190, 200 pounds, and I was slim. Well, the doctor said I wasn't eating right, which was true, and I didn't get any exercise. So she gave me the obvious advice to do what I need to do to keep my body healthy, to work out, to eat right, to stay in shape. About three weeks later, I had a uh, scheduled another appointment with her. She wanted to do another checkup on me. So, and when she did, everything was fine. I was healthy, I was, I was okay, didn't have no hypertension, nothing like that. And I was like, okay, cool. But I decided to stay at the gym because I didn't want to hear any bad news. So I made it a habit, a routine of doing it every day except weekends. And I started seeing my body was getting bigger. I wasn't trying to be massive, but I was like, whoa, what is this coming from? I came from a extra large shirt to like a 3X. I'm like, whoa. So like almost every two, three months, I had to start changing my shirts, buying new clothes, because I was busting out of them like the Incredible Hawk. <laughs> and but then I started seeing, you know, wrestlers and bodybuilders. And I'm like, okay, if I want to start doing this, let me, let me conform to what I see so I can be more cut or more ripped than what I am. And so what happened was that I was conforming myself to their image by doing what they were doing, eating what they were eating, and the supplements that they were taking, I was taking. Not all conforming is bad, but it really depends on where your heart is. I was trying to stay healthy, but at the same time, I wanted to be more muscular than what I was. There's another conforming that I can tell you as far as a testimony that I'm sharing with you now was that when I was young, before I got locked up, I started to conform to the image that I seen in the world due to possibly peer pressure that I was becoming more like my friends and to gangs and smoking and drinking that I was adding to them what they originally were. I was just being a copycat. I was copying the patterns of their behavior. And one thing led to another that I was almost facing up 70 years in prison. Not all conforming is bad. It depends on where your heart is. Now what Paul is saying is that do not be conformed to the world. Do not copy the world's patterns. Do not be friends of the world. Because when you are friends with the world, you become hostile. You become an enemy towards God. Conform to, in Greek, suke matizo. Do not try to identify yourself as being one with the world, being shaped outwardly, following the patterns and the trends of this world. Transform, in Greek, metamorphou, means to change into another form. You all have probably seen or heard of the movie called Transformers. The idea of robotic machines that can transform into another form is remarkable. Now these robots didn't change into another robot, although I'm pretty sure they could, but they changed into a different vehicle or an aircraft. Now we personally cannot change into a vehicle or we can't change into another person. Transform, it actually means to change, to change from one form to another. Now. 
we necessarily cannot change into another being or another creature. If you're watching this and your favorite animal is something, you cannot simply transform into that. No. What we have to transform into is a better version of ourselves. From being immature to an adult state. From being used to be foolish to someone wise. That is a transformation process. Metamorpho, if you look and listen to the word closely, it sounds a lot like metamorphosis. Apparently that's where metamorphosis got the word from, and also the word morph that's in it. It means, well, two things. In zoology, an insect or an amphibian, the process of transformation from an immature form to an adult form. The other means of metamorphosis is a change of a form of nature or a thing or a person to a complete different one. The difference between conform and transform is that conform is to copy something, to mimic, to duplicate one's behavior or attitude, and it's shown on the outside. But transform is something that starts from within. And when it starts from within, it automatically changes the outside. When God transformed me, it wasn't me transforming myself. It was that he had to get me away from the world so that he can change me into what I was supposed to be. Before I got locked up, I was into gangs, drugs, uh, disobedience to my parents, didn't really care what anybody had to say. And that bad attitude led me to a place where I did not want to be. When I was incarcerated, that moment changed my life. Not that I didn't know how long I was staying there because when you're locked up and you don't know when you're getting out, and that kind of makes the process a little bit longer. And for me going back and forth to court, I didn't really care if I stayed or not. But the moment when I start reading the Bible, when the moment that I start knowing who God is personally, when I start to reach out to him each, each and every day, there was a change in my life that I know that I couldn't do by myself. And after all that has been said and done, I got out and that, that change that I didn't expect to go through happened. My friends, I did not no longer want to hang or do things with. Uh, the music that I was playing, the games that I was playing, the way that I was acting, it changed because there was an inside change. True change starts from within. That's something that only God can do. The Greek word for renew is anakainoo, which means to make new or to cause to grow up. Ana means to complete a process or moving up. Kainoo means to renew from one stage to a better or more developed one. One of the many interesting things about God and his character is that he is a God of completeness. He does not simply want someone just to be cleansed or healed, but for them to be delivered and renewed. God is a God of completeness. He is a God of wholeness. And in the same way, He wants us to be. In Luke chapter 17, verse 11 through 19, there was a story about 10 men who had leprosy. They were excommunicated from the village because when you have this sort of disease, virus, you cannot be around people who don't have it because you can afflict them with the same thing. And so they were 10 as a group amongst each other. When they seen Jesus, 
they didn't come near him, but they spoke to him from a distance. Say, hey, can you help us? Can you heal us? Can you make us clean? And Jesus said, so let it be as they walked away, they were healed. But only one of them came back. The nine went away, but one came back because he realized, he acknowledged that he was clean. And so he started to go to Jesus and he started to praise God for what was done to him. And Jesus looked at him and said, wait, there was nine of you. Only you came back. Only one of you came back. And in some versions, some translations in the Bible, it says that he was made whole. God doesn't just want to make you clean, but he wants to make you whole. Because when you're clean or cleansed, you can have that same issue again. But when you're whole, that means that you would never have that issue. That means you'll be complete. In Genesis chapter 1, it says that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was without form, empty, and darkness covered the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering above the surface of the waters. And it says that God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And he separated the light from the darkness. He called the light day, and the darkness he called night. Then evening came, and then there was morning the first day. God seen that it needs to be complete from turning something that was formless into a form. From making something that was originally empty, he filled it up. And besides it being dark, he gave it light, separating the light from the darkness. God is a God of completeness. God decided that the place that he wanted mankind to be in, to be full of life, was originally formless empty and darkness that just sounds incomplete the spirit of god renewed and transformed that area this place into what we have now as earth it was formless god formed it not just giving it a shape but a purpose it was empty void of life but god filled it with creatures of the land water air and us the mind is a terrible thing to waste. The mind is the control center of the being. If the mind is damaged, parts of the body cannot fully optimize performance. Now, our brain have been distorted. Our brain have been troubled, maybe by past experience. Therefore, our mind needs to be renewed. So there is an importance of being complete but that comes with having a new mind or a mind renewed. But how can we have a new mind? Well, I'm glad that you asked. God watches you and understands you, not just you, but also what you're doing or try to do. Are you willing? That's the most important question for humanity. Does God see that you are willing to change? By the grace and mercy of God, there is something called a wake-up call or a reality check. That is God's way of getting your attention. Set your eyes on heavenly things where Christ is. Set your mind on things above and not on things below. Your head, your heart, should focus only on Christ. He is the only way to God. He is the only way to heaven. In Amos chapter 3 verse 7 it says that God does not do anything without first revealing his secrets to his servants the prophets. Deuteronomy chapter 29 verse 29 says that the secretive things belongs to God but the things revealed belongs to us, his people. There is things that God knows that we don't know but there is also things that we want to know and God is willing to share that with us. So when the scriptures tells us to focus on the realities of heaven, the things in heaven, God has now opened the doors, the gates, the kingdom for us to not necessarily just see it, but to experience it. And even with YouTube, YouTube is a, is a great effective thing for online ministry because just by uploading a video or even just by writing something, it unlocks our our faith to continue to keep growing and not to be stagnant or stuck. 
So in these testimonies, divine revelations from people that have been to heaven, that have seen angels, that have witnessed mansions in heaven, the animals, just marvelous things in heaven. Those are just a glimpse for us to understand and to also soon to experience. So when we focus on these things in heaven, we are able to take those things with us. And even though you may see this often online, just know that you too can also experience the same. And Jesus said, ask and ye shall receive. Once you set your head towards something, when you're focused on something, the rest will follow. Once the head is out, the body is out. This is true even to the fact that when we were born, is that once the head comes out, the body will follow us. It was 1999 and I was happy knowing that I was going to get a PlayStation for Christmas and I remember having it it was just a beauty because I didn't do no homework and I didn't do no housework my grades were flunking but my game was up <laughs> my mother seen that and she warned me a couple of times do your homework stay off of that game I said, okay, it didn't mean no difference to me because as long as I got my system, I was happy. That PlayStation was my best friend. I took it everywhere with me. <laughs> but it came to a point where I was flunking my grades, almost failing. She got tired of it, even me being mouthy, sarcastic. She took that PlayStation and launched it. skyrocketed and it cracked I was sad but my grades went up realized that the need for entertainment wasn't even it was pointless because I focused so much on being entertained and on my education but that story I just shared with you kind of remind me of the 10 men that I mentioned earlier in Luke chapter 17, that they focused on Jesus. Then the renewal of the mind appeared. And when that came, the newness of life also appeared. And when renewal comes, that's when change or transformation will be complete. Now I'm not sure if I ever told you guys about this on one of my videos, but on biblehub.com, as you go there, you're able to see different versions of the Bible, different translations as well in the books of the Bible. And as you scroll down, you can see the meaning of each one in their own writings. I find this to be very effective and it kind of helped me personally to know what different versions mean and some can be easy some of it could be a little bit difficult but with this online ministry this is um this is very beautiful the new king james niv nlt i thank you all for watching this video again i was reading from romans chapter 12 verse 2. god bless you all